Praise the Lord, my dear friend. Dr. Thomas Matthew the fourth here. I've been speaking on the subject of the power of relationships, and I am just going now into volume seven, which is a very rich series. And today the Lord spoke to me to deal with this. The power of relationships with apostles, prophets, um, trainers, mentors, coaches, and just also people that help to propel you into your gift and purpose and talent. You know, it's just it's just so important that we we begin to understand that God has people that are going to help us get our destiny fulfilled. Number one association is with him the boss. Let me adjust this up a little bit. I feel like I'm like I'm talking to you from the top of the mountain down. <laughs> we can subtitle this live from the Range Rover. Ooh, the God Chronicles about relationships. Now, uh, I love it when I'm coming from my uh, my television studio, and then I have I have so much uh, ambiance there and what. But when I'm on the road in a conference, I'm coming to you like this, so it's okay. The power of relationships. God is, is interested in your success from today, not even from tomorrow. Is that deep? From today, not even from tomorrow. There's something that you need to get done even today, the rest of the day into the evening, or the morning, noon, night, morning, noon, evening, and night, and late night, and twilight, twilight, midnight, after night rather than tomorrow because you know time is short oh time is short and the clock is ticking on the sands of time for the earth as far as uh the last days that we we've entered into but also in your life you know it's not an option that you fulfill your destiny or not and you you need the kind of help and the kind of push and the kind of uh bravado that and courage and blast that some people have and and the lord spoke to me today he said son tell my people all around the world i want them to get with it from today and they need help of the people that are going to like you know help launch them and you know blast them forward push them forward launch them forward into what they're doing uh into what they're supposed to be doing god is not interested in um you just surviving. Okay, I want to give you an example of that from my book, if you could see it here. Oh, Healing the Soul of the Society. And I'm going to re and Prophetic Keys of Successful Living down at the bottom. I'm kind of holding two books together here. And uh, uh, you see the lion and the buildings and me over there. Praise the Lord, given the roar of the Lord. I'm going to make this... Uh, also a book of just generic prophetic principles to heal any society because I realized after I wrote it, it wasn't just for one place. The principles are so powerful. They're for the lineup of victory in an entire society and entire, entire groups of people, people groups all over the world. Uh, so point number 20, 125, I got 250 keys, prophecies in this book. Uh, prophecy number 125, which exactly halfway through the book, imagine number 125 out of 250. Here it is. Jesus mentored and greatly developed his 12 disciples and the others, the women and then the 70 and then the other people that he got to interact with. Remember even the, the crazy demonized guy from the Gadarenes, man from the Gadarenes, he, uh, he wanted to follow Jesus. Remember the woman at the well in John chapter 4? She wanted to follow Jesus. He told, he, and he told them to go back and tell the people. And they both did. So they both became evangelists. A demonized guy with legion became an evangelistic guy. Can you imagine? And the woman at the, at the well, who was a very uh, uh, hot woman, you know, in the wrong way, uh, too many men, she became an evangelist. 
Look at Rahab even helped the children of Israel and the, and the Lord promised her a blessing even to be in the lineage because of what she did that was righteous. So don't tell me that anybody cannot get in this thing. Some of the worst, most laziest people are just plain old church folks who don't want to do anything. And God is not interested in you uh, just sitting around wasting time. So maybe someone radical in the world system is going to get touched by the fire of God, I believe, for that. And they'll become the greatest one. And then you, then they need to be really trained and raised up and then sent out. But they already have the passion to do certain things. So Matt, perhaps I'm not talking to the lazy, but I'm talking to the people that want to be giants. Somebody say amen. Jesus mentored and greatly developed his 12 disciples and the others, as I was just saying. Then thereafter, they were commissioned to become mighty apostles. Yeah? And they went out by the Holy Ghost, turning the world upside down. Wow. Can I tell you any day? Listen to me. I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about connection. I'm talking about combustive, combative, fire-filled chemistry, connection, dunamis power, the Holy Ghost coming upon you any day that you're not doing this, turning the world upside down and making the world a better place to live, my friend, you're not living the life that God wanted you to live. And he's saying again, he wants it done today. So the Lord spoke to me about connection with leaders, connection with the prophet, connection with uh, uh, apostolically, connection prophetically, connection pastorally, co connection like in the realm of training for success and to learn and to listen and to get impacted and imparted to by by this by this anointing that's upon my life okay and it's going to help you this is a divine relationship a divine connection and this is volume seven and you know seven is a great number and uh it's just like that the connection direct to the pipeline of god coming down to you the, the relationship and the connection is going to cause uh just super super power super power fire in Jesus' name. You need to share this already. <laughs> Somebody needs to hear this already. I want to challenge you and stir you up. The Lord says this. This is the word of the Lord. Any day, any hour that you're not doing something productive to advance his kingdom and to fulfill the mission and call that he has on your life is an off hour, an off day. You're off. You're not on. And you need to be on all the time, okay? Now, here's another one. Gideon, Gideon was another one, point number 26, prophecy number 26 in his book. Gideon did more with his 300 special ones than he ever could have done with even the 32,000 that they thought they had it going on, but in reality, they didn't. You know, okay, so I'm done with that. I want to move over to one of my other books now for a minute or two here. Now, the Lord, the Lord says this. You may think that, you know, you're okay. You make all kinds of excuses, but excuses excuses can uh, are, are a recipe for failure excuses are like your butt this butt that get your butt out the way already get it out of the way and stop making excuses because excuses are the construction materials to build a house of failure and you don't want to do that amen that's powerful now relationships okay i talked yesterday quite a bit about the fear of transparency also keeps us from people and I got into a lot of things that where the rubber hits the road of a lot of issues that people want to do you go back and replay volume six I can't recap it now but it's there it's recorded you can get it pray about every relationship I did say that uh you know what we need James and John by our side not Jonah and Judas not someone that's you know fighting the will of God or someone that's just a total thief and liar and traitor and I've had some Judases, and I've seen some Absaloms, and I've seen some Jezebels, and I've, I've seen some Jonas, and I've seen some, uh, more than Jonah, I've seen the Judases, okay? Yes, Je Judas brought Jesus to his Calvary, but that was the only thing that was good about it. The rest was horrific. So don't think that you got to accept J uh, Judas in your life. Uh, okay. Here's a principle, too, that if you want to gauge, I want to say this, if you want to gauge, uh, you know, connectivity with somebody, you also have to be realistic and look at people for how they are, not just how you'd like to, them to be or to become. And then you just think, well, uh, you know, maybe, 
you know, I can just stick it out and they're going to get, you know, better and no, 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 you got to be realistic too. But when you, but when on the, uh, inversely to that, uh, you see somebody that's full of the power of God, my God, you need to connect. You see someone that's brilliant and they have some insight and wisdom for you. That's the person to listen to and get connected with in Jesus mighty name, because something tangible will happen for the benefit of your life as you do that. A real friend, I, I love this, and I say this, for, I wrote this from experience. <laughs> I've had a lot of experience. You know, a man with a lot of experience is also unbeatable, because, you know, we can get a lot of revelation from that, but also we know how to teach and train people a lot of things. Listen, uh, a, a person who's a real friend doesn't make you so irritable or drive you crazy. They, that means they got some demonic thing in them. You need to really watch that. I don't know what it is. Certain people... They just unnerve you. They just grieve you. They, ha, they just, you know, make you irritable and at you feel anger and something's wrong. What is it? What is it? I don't know. Sometimes you see a good person and then you, you're around them and something's crazy. It's just something they got on them. And as sad as that might seem, it's just some, some, something not to connect with, okay? Something not to connect with. This is deep right here. You have to disconnect from those who disrespect your life mission and calling. Now, if you live in a house with people and you don't have a choice of having another house or you're related to somebody, you know, relatives you can move away from. But if you married someone, I, I don't understand that too well. So I'm not even going to touch on that too much. And you, you got to deal with it. But all the other relationships are negotiable and changeable, okay? Changeable. So you, you can... Uh, Yes, do share this. Do share this. You can, you can change it. You got to get away from people that are not in the flow of your mission and calling. You just have to. All right. I'm talking to you as God's prophet here, as as a teacher, as a trainer, as a coach, as a friend, as a helper, as a, a booster for you to go where you need to get to. Wow. The only exception to this, as I was saying, are your parents and your spouse. Your parents, you have to honor them no matter what. And your spouse, that's another subject. You said I do, you can't just go and say I don't. So be careful of who you say I do to. Or who, who you say maybe to. Because it may not, if it's not the right thing, you don't want to get any more involved even a day. Even if you made a mistake and got in a relationship or you thought you were trying to connect with someone and it just wasn't the right thing. The minute you see that it's not the right thing, step back and leave it there. Be as nice as you can, all right? Be as nice as you can. Love, 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 love. Kingdom, Jesus. We're all full of the, of the Holy Spirit. We love everybody. So just be really uh, cool like that. But don't uh, 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 keep walking in uh, a thing that's not been ordained by God. The minute you see that it's not, just stop right there. All right? Now, okay, okay, okay. Moving on. There's some more in that paragraph, but I'm going to move ahead. Be prayerful. Oh, let me just go ahead. Let go another one. The relationship. Relationship. Be prayerful about marrying and choosing, and make sure you choose the right mate. Be careful about who you marry, and choose the right mate. Of course, the wrong connection can destroy your life. The right connection will be a real blessing to you. And all the single folks said, "Hallelujah!" I'm hoping. I'm wishing and hoping. In Jesus' name, let I, I pray that you'll get to experience that sooner than later. In Jesus' name, the closest you get to heaven in a relationship is through the Isaac relationship. The closest you can get to hell in a relationship, this is in, a, any, in anything, in business, in friendship, in camaraderie, in social things, in covenant or church or anywhere. The closest you get to hell is in an Ishmael relationship. And Ishmael is something that uh, has not been ordained by God and it's just got a lot of trouble attached to it. But the Isaac is the one of promise that's chosen and it'll just begin to work out. So God does have the Isaac. I remember there's a woman in London, England, who was going to get married, and she was a partner of the ministry and involved in a lot of our meetings there. And she decided she met this guy, and decided she's going to get married. And then we were in a we were in a a, 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 a meeting, a service, and, and a gathering together, and uh, in London. And I said, uh, the Lord asked this question: Who is Isaac? Who is Isaac? In other words, we found out later that the one she was with was Ishmael. And then God even 
tried to break up the wedding. Have you ever seen a wedding that doesn't happen? The day, the Saturday that it was going to happen, all hell broke loose. And it was at the wrong church, it was a real wrong church, and it was uh, a lot of things were wrong. And then it just got crushed. It just didn't, the, the, the event didn't happen. Well, she went on to try to make it happen again. And it turns out the guy was a fraud. Uh, he was a crooked preacher, and he was HIV positive, and he was, uh, had other women, and he was just a bloody mess. And I saw the guy in another meeting in London, in another place. He came to, this guy actually came to that meeting. And this is way before I knew all this other thing when the Lord said, who is Isaac? And when I was just laying hands on people, going down the line, praying for people at the altar, when I touched him, it was like touching stone, uh, like a solid wall. He didn't move, budge. He was just sealed off. And I thought, something's wrong here. I made a note of that right there because this was a guy who said he was a pastor, had a church and all of that. And he was just sealed off to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit could not move and touch this man. I was in a church in Chicago, and people lined up at the altar to come, and, and uh, when, I, when I went, the first one in line was the pastor. Now, this is really out of protocol, and really kind of would seem quite rude, but the Holy Ghost, I wasn't going to go back there once I saw the demon on top of the building, and I saw the, all the things that were going on in that church were, were like horrific. I mean, a lot of stuff going on. It was like the house of Hophni and Phinehas and Eli and all that. And, uh, whew. And uh, when I went to put my hand, I had my hand stretched out, and I went, and the Holy, a wind blew and hit me and pushed me like I almost fell down. I went round, stepped, like to hold myself up and get to the second person. And then by the time I got to the second person, I forgot the first. The first one was the pastor. My hand couldn't touch him. The Lord, the Holy Spirit himself, blew a wind and knocked me out of the way, and I went to the next people. And people were falling out. People were blessed. Miracles were happening. We had test We heard testimonies later. And at the end of the meeting, they, they, they want to whisk me off into the office. And there was nobody there. All the people were outside. I'm sitting in there by myself. And the lady says to me, hey, do you want some hand sanitizer? I was like, what? I just had my hands on the people. If I want to go to the bathroom, I'll do that. Hand sanitizer. Like, that's what you do when you get in there. I thought, these are the sheep of God. If I was praying, it's a holy thing. And I sat in there. And then they left me there by myself. I thought, about two minutes, I was like, nah. I got up and I walked out and I was greeting everybody, talking to everybody. Of course, I was never going to go back there. But uh, this is not a normal thing, okay? We have relationships with pastors. I have pastors I've preached for like, like multitudes of times. We have covenant. We have relationship. I'm talking about something that was out of order that just have, happened to happen. And God did allow it because it wasn't like it wasn't on his schedule because people were blessed there. And he also wanted me to see what was all going on there and all that, blah, 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 blah. And he wanted to bless me too and bless the people. So there, it, it happened that way. So we have to know that there are, there are uh, things in people that are not conducive, all right, for the advancing of the purpose of God. So those are the kind of people you don't want to be with. Did you get my point? I'm in a hurry. I've got to run back into the conference, and I don't mean to be in a rush. Uh, one of my mentors says, always be where you are. So I'm here right now for the next minute or two, and I'm going to pick this up tomorrow. We're going to go to volume eight. I feel the flow. We're going to go, we're going to go more volumes. Catherine Coleman had an experience. She got connected with the great Catherine Coleman. She got cooked up with a man who wasn't the will of God. And a minute she was small and obscure until the day she walked away from that relationship. And long, a lot of details of the story. But when she walked away and got in the presence of God, that's what her ministry blew up and touched the world. So we have to know that covenant with the wrong people is bad. Covenant and connection with the right people is great. And we need to make sure we're with the right people. Always try to walk in unity and harmony with people and love toward everybody because that's the will of God. And you know, you know that division and strife and all that attracts other evil things, so you don't want that. Here's another thing. You're not as good as you can be by yourself. I said, I've said this before. You need, to, uh, you need other people to help you. And I'm here to do that. Father, in Jesus' name, why the wise walk with the wise and become wiser, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. You know that proverb. Choose your friends and associations wisely. I have so much more to say, but I want to pray right now. I declare in Jesus' name that today, the Lord said today, I want, I want my people, I want you all to do something productive today. Start today. Start the plan. Start the dream. Start to write. Start to do, do something. Start to get in into something, you know, something, something, something. Don't wait 
for another day for what you can do today. Don't put it off for tomorrow. The great thing that you can do today in Jesus' name. And find that place of, of, of procreation, purpose-filled production and functionality. And let the Lord be magnified. And let his power touch you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Let the fire of heaven touch you right now in Jesus' mighty name. And let the Lord's will be done because he has a plan and he wants it going on right now. I'm glad to be a vessel in his hand and his mouthpiece to you to help you get on with the big picture and the big program that he has for you in Jesus' name. The power of relationships. Isn't this awesome? Relationship, relationship. Thank you for your relationship with me as a ministry partner. You can do that on thomasmanton.com. Do share this broadcast and please do, uh, 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 you know, help somebody else and sow a seed into their life by sharing this great message with them and all the other volumes as well of this and other messages we're doing. And um, thank you for being my partner. As you sow into this grace, the grace of this for new open doors, relationships, connections, all kinds of new things are going to happen for you. And you're going to begin to see it in Jesus' name, plus financial avenues of new money coming to you new connections and divine relationships there's an anointing upon this session and upon this series so into this grace tap it on thomasmanton.com in kenya you know what to do by m pesa uh i'll we'll put it in the comments 0792-320-780 is the number that's at the top of our facebook page also and also on our website thomasmanton.com all the details are there uh, get there and, and explore and get connected up in Jesus' name. And the Lord's going to bless you mightily for all you do for his work in Jesus' name. Giving is all about you because you're getting the harvest out of it in Jesus' name. And I'm praying that God will begin to teach you to profit, cause you to profit, and lead you into the great, 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 great destiny that he has for you. Even greater today, not even tomorrow, but right now, something good's happening for you this very day in Jesus name to kick you into a new season so be it in Jesus name I'll see you on the next broadcast I'm Thomas Matthew the fourth love you much talk to you on the next broadcast I'm praying for you I'm praying for you in Jesus name I am